Good afternoon and welcome once again to Pointer Park where we're looking forward to another exciting afternoon of National League Division 1 Rugby. Today Kelso welcome Ayr in what can only be described once again as a crucial must win match for both teams. Kelso still sit on the top of the league with 83 points, however after securing two bonus points in the last few weekends, Ayr have crept up to being just one point behind. With both teams facing two away games to finish off their season, this league really is coming down to the wire. Here's Stuart Cameron with a look at today's game. And it was Ayr who started the better, with plenty possession and opportunities to get on the score sheet. But a mixture of good Kelso defensive play and Ayr handling errors meant they had nothing to show for their efforts. Against the run of play, Frankie Robson gave Kelso the lead on seven minutes. A Dwayne Patterson break put Kevin Dryden into space and Robson took the simplest of catches to break clear and strong running from the home captain gave his side the lead with Patterson goaling the extras. Ayr's experienced number eight Pete McCallum has been on the scene for a while and the battle between him and his opposite number Bruce McNeil was always going to be one to watch. He broke free down the touchline with Rowan Potty in support, but again the Kelso defence were on hand to prevent a try from being scored and turned over the ball at this breakdown to clear the danger. Kelso were winning the physical encounters and this kind of dominating play helped them throughout the match. On 20 minutes Ewan Hamilton was caught not rolling away and was penalised in front of the posts, a punishable offence which cost his team another three points with Dwayne Patterson again on target. Patterson stretched his side's lead out to 13 points with a second penalty five minutes later but Ayr kept pressing and when Potty broke free and headed towards the line he passed to Ross McCorkendale but his scrum half couldn't control the ball and Bruce McNeil swept up at the back and another moment of danger for Kelso passed with Ayr left mulling over what could have been. The visitors certainly had enough ball to give themselves plenty of chances and with five minutes to go till the break, Ayr's fullback Scott Watson finally got points on the board for his team, Potty again a thorn in the side of the Kelso defence and they certainly struggled to cope with his strong attacks. The ball was recycled well and captain Cameron Rees and prop Seth Ray both had a hand in keeping the move going. Despite good defensive work, Ayr were right on the brink of scoring and a try looked inevitable. Another couple of phases and a penalty was coming. With free ball available, Ayr switched play out to the right. Reese again involved along with Jamie Bova and there was Wilson to go in at the corner to reduce the deficit to eight points. The Ayr supporters got so excited two minutes later when Jamie Bova crossed for a try in the corner that they obliterated it from the camera's view. But just before the break, Patterson made it 16-10 with another penalty. In the second half, Kelso put on the pressure, but Ayr defended well and held their line. Kelso went back up the field with Keith Melbourne on the hoof, with Kevin Dryden in support, and they found themselves deep into Ayr territory. They wanted quick ball and they got it, with Terry Logan thundering up to take things further. Pete McCallum managed to stop him, but the ball was quickly recycled again, and this time the backs were involved. Dwayne Patterson kicking into space for Robson to run onto, but he couldn't get control of the ball and the chance was gone. The penalty had already been awarded though and it gave Patterson another chance to add three points. This time a little bit of controversy with the Kelso touch judge saying it went over, but the air touch judge said no. The referee agreed that it didn't go between the posts and the penalty was ruled out. No dispute though about the next penalty for Kelso and the lead had extended to nine points. As we went into injury time at the end of the match, Kelso made the game safe with a try from Bruce McNeil and that sealed the victory and four valuable points for them opening up a five-point gap on air with two games to go. Promotion to the top flight now very much in the hands of the men from Pointer Park but they've still got work to do although they're now in pole position and that result will have given them a great deal of confidence. Final score at Pointer Park, Kelso 24, Air 10. I think at half time we went and we felt like we had the momentum because um, we had, had a lot of pressure, had good territory and as you say it was probably just that final pass that, that eluded us but fair play to Kelso, they, they dug deep in that and half time probably just came at a bad time for us. Yeah, it was certainly a physical encounter and, and I think the set piece was probably important today and, and I imagine you feel your set piece didn't function as well as it could have. Yeah, I mean line out time probably disappointed and we'll, we'll go back and have a look at that but um, I the heart of the boys showed out there is just 
second to none. So I can't can't complain about it. We'll go back, look at the look at the technicalities, but we'll go from there. You came into the day a point behind Kel, so you now trail them by five points. Both teams still have two games to play. Both of you have tricky trips to come. Kelso up at Highland, all you can really do is, is stay positive, keep training hard and hope that Kelso slip up. That's it, that's it. We've got two games to go up and get hopefully ten points out of that. Um, not taking anything for given, but all we can do is beat the team that's in front of us, so that's what we're going to aim to do. Yeah, really really happy. Listen, it, it, it wasn't pretty um, a lot of the game, but we talked about um, giving that jersey the respect it deserved, and I think that's probably what pulled us through in the end. You know, getting off the ground, up to feet, and, and making sure we put the shots in, and, and working really hard for each other. And that's been the fundamentals of our season so far. You know, <coughs> things don't always go to plan, but we've got to make sure we stick together and, and play for the 80 minutes. And I thought we did that today. Things looked a bit shaky in the first couple of minutes. Didn't take the restart. A couple of penalties, and, and then that Frankie Robson try, essentially out of nowhere against the run of play. I, I guess settled the nerves a little bit. Yeah, I think it did, but look, listen, to be fair, you know, when you're playing one of the best teams in the league, you've got to be on it for 80 minutes and you can't get too far away, too far ahead of yourself. Went 13 nil up there and then we switched off for 20 minutes, basically. You can't do that. Um, so it's pleasing to me to, to, to know that, you know, half time we came out, we had a rollicking in there, we came out and, and we fired some shots. And I think we controlled the second half fairly well, you know, we played in the right right areas and we put pressure on them and we, we tried to keep the ball. And, and it was a very um, professional performance in the second half, certainly. I just asked Cameron about the set piece from an air point of view. If they were disappointed from a Kelso point of view, I thought the the set piece was superb today. I'm, I'm guessing that's another area that you're really happy with. Yeah, we worked work really hard on that, and uh, uh, you know, it's no individuals there. We just work hard as a team Tuesday, Thursday, and make sure that everybody knows their roles, and that's what it's all about. And you know, absolutely credit to you. They, they fired shots at us, and they, they put us under some serious pressure there. They're, they're a great team, and, and they're well drilled, and we're, we're very fortunate there to come away with the win. But um, Listen, uh, the job's not done yet. We've got a couple of games to play yet, so we will not get carried away. And, but we'll enjoy tonight, and um, we'll make sure we go back to back to hard yards on uh, this Tuesday. So a 24-10 win for Kelso means they stretch their lead at the top of the league to five points. As I mentioned earlier, both teams have got two away games to end their season, so they're both going to have to keep playing their socks off. There's nothing for us next week. We're back on the 25th. But for now, from Pointer Park, cheerio.